a quarterback showdown that turned into a one man show. What game am I talking about? On the other side. Sports presents on the daily. How you doing, VIP? Cole Johnson's live and in living color on the Daily Sun Tap, presented by Cole Sports. If you haven't done so already, come on. Subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you can be up to date on all videos that come from this channel. Monday through Friday, this show comes at you on the daily. So be in a know whether you're at your house, at, at work, in school, college or high school, <laughs> at church or anywhere where you congregate amongst people on the daily presented by Cold Sports on the Cold Sports YouTube channel. Monday through Friday is when this show comes at you. So it's Thursday. And with every Thursday, you know, we like to do a throwback Thursday something, right? So this is not going to disappoint. You know, since we're talking about quarterbacks and a veteran quarterback versus an up and comer or a veteran quarterback versus a not so not so old veteran quarterback. You know, what we have right now between the Bucks with Brady and the Chiefs with Mahomes. Well, this Super Bowl, going 31 years back, would be one that was sort of the old guard versus supposedly the new Ur guard in the 49ers and Joe Montana, the Broncos with, jo- uh, with John Elway. And (laughs) it was a laugher just like the laugh I just put forth because it's a wonderful case study in one team being ready and the other team being fodder. And we're going to talk about Super Bowl 24 in this edition's January 28th, 1990. The place, the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. The teams, the Broncos clad in their orange, and the 49ers with the white road jerseys, of course, with the scarlet, and the gold. Two teams powered by their quarterbacks the Broncos with John Elway, the 49ers with Joe Montana, but two teams getting there two different ways and having two different purposes and reasons as to getting there. Take, for instance, the Broncos, who two two times before they've been in this game and they just simply couldn't cut the mustard, losing to the Giants 39-20. to Then the very next year in the Super Bowl, Losing to the Washington NFL franchise, forty-two to ten, off of off of Doug Williams throwing five touchdown passes in the quarter. Conversely, you had the 49ers who, what well, they were battling for team of the decade honors, as they staked their claim in Super Bowl sixteen against the Bengals, the first time. 2116. Then in their backyard in Palo Alto on the farm, they beat the they beat the upcoming, or I should say the upstart uh Dolphins, led by another young gun with Dan Marino, 38 to 16 in Super Bowl 19. Then we come to Super Bowl 23, where the 49ers beat the Bengals a second time, this time 20 to 16 with Montana beating another upstart at quarterback. His name, Norman Esiason. Oh, I'm so sorry. Boomer Esiason. (laughs) So here they are, three-time champions in the decade. They want to basically put the cherry on the Sunday to let everybody know that the 49ers were the team in the 1980s. 
the Broncos wanted to know that wanted people to know that well they will be coming up in the nineties and yeah they went to the mountaintop twice and came up short, but this was going to be their year. And the Broncos were the scrappier dogmatic underdog. I mean, they won the AFC West. They got the number one seed. They squeaked by the Steelers in the divisional round, 24-23, in Chuck Noll's last NFL playoff game he coached. Then they met up with the Browns, and of course they had <laughs> they had wonderful clashes two times before in the AFC championships, uh, championships. This time the Broncos handled their business 37-21 in pulling away in the second half against the Browns. The 49ers, NFC West champs, 14-2, they were about their business. They saw the Vikings in the divisional round. They wanted to get at them for beating them in candlestick in 1987. Two years later, different result in the final score being 41 to 13. Then the team that pretty much everybody said, well, they may have the puncher's chance of beating the beating the 49ers and eliminating them out of all the teams that are in the NFL, the Los Angeles Rams. A 30 to 3 decision pretty much eliminated all hope there. So you had a team in the 49ers, they were just dogmatic and determined. And you had the Broncos who they were scrappy and they found ways to win. <sighs> Too bad the 49ers did not get the memo. Because as you can see, John Elway was basically doing this from the 49ers front four, just running and scrambling away from pressure all game long. I mean, the totals basically set it and bear it out. 10 of 26, 108 yards, two interceptions, no touchdowns. He just looked all out of sorts and the whole offense looked out of sorts. Meanwhile, you had plays like a bomb, a 38 yard bomb to uh, Jerry Rice from John Elway. I mean, sorry, from <laughs> Joe Montana that just just ate at the secondary and the offensive line just giving the 49ers room to operate, whether it was the running game, which they amassed 140 yards on the ground or the passing game, which they amassed over 300. Montana's jersey looked as clean probably when he walked out the tunnel as he did when he walked back into the locker room from the tum- uh, from the field. He just was not touched, but I think one sack the whole game. I mean, <laughs> I mean, just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful performance by him. 297 yards, five touchdowns. Well, I did say Super Bowl. Montana didn't throw a pick or turn the ball over once. So you know what the number is for the INT department. 55-10 was the final score. You had you had the Broncos just running for their lives, and you had the 49ers running as if they were eight-year-old children and they saw candy for Halloween. It was absolutely ridiculous to watch this. It was a it was a coronation from the word go. It was It was a name your score type of situation and scenario from the get-go. The Broncos did not stand a chance. The Broncos, and I'm not saying this to be funny, facetious, or insulting, but it just was the truth. The Broncos literally looked like a high school team, and the 49ers were running a scrimmage with them. It looked that out of sorts. Uh, Take the Super Bowl played in the very same stadium four years prior Super Bowl 20 between the Bears and the Patriots now that was a mugging that was a legalized mugging (laughs) that was on display in front of the national audience that was bad 46 to 10 was the final score of that game this as I said it was literally a dominant performance by the defensive front for the 49ers the no, no matter what blocking scheme the Broncos offensive line had, the the front four, the front four for the 49ers just gashed them. 
didn't matter. It didn't matter what they did. They just they just gashed holes. They just went in the gaps and they beat, beat whatever man that was going to block them to the spot all game long. For the lone exception of the touchdown scramble by Elway, <laughs> the Broncos couldn't do anything on offense. Meanwhile, the 49ers could do everything on offense and did. And it was an absolute classic performance by the 49ers. I mean, you, you had a team that literally showed you this is how the West Coast offense is supposed to operate. And this is why we play the West Coast offense. Because we're about scoring them points. We're about making mismatches happen. And we're about basically just putting our guys in the right position, whether it's the quarterback, the running back, the wide receiver, the tight end, or the lineman. It's about putting every person in the right spot to execute at its maximum potential. Bill Walsh would have been proud, and I, and I bet he was proud, but he wasn't on the sideline. So the motivation for this 49ers team was that they could win a Super Bowl ring without the guy that people credited most with basically putting this team together in Bill Walsh. These weren't Walsh's guys anymore as George Seifert was at the helm and the ship rolled almost as flawlessly as it did under Walsh. And in terms of records, it actually flowed better this year than the, than the year prior because in 1988, they squeaked into the playoffs 10 and 6. And they had to go the hard route through the playoffs, winning three games to get to the Super Bowl. In 1989, they wrapped up the number one seed. They demolished their two opponents in the, the playoffs. And then they just simply steamrolled over the Broncos. The defeat was so bad. The defeat was so bad that people were starting to say around this time that the NFC just dominated the AFC and the AFC had no business fielding a team for the Super Bowl. It was that dominant of a performance. It was that bad of a performance by the Broncos. And now the Broncos have had to face three beatdowns in four years. And it was just horrible that it was... It was horrible. People actually pitied the Broncos. It was that bad. They pitied the Broncos. The 49ers actually looked like bullies. When did you ever, ever think you would see the 49ers look like bullies? But in that game, they did. But we saw excellence on the field. And Joe Montana being the first three-time Super Bowl MVP, he just made that secondary look as though they were stuck in mud. And Rice and Taylor were running routes all over the field. 55 to 10, Super Bowl 24, the 49ers just showed it how just showed everybody how it's done. And they showed it on this date in 1990. Now, if you want this shirt you see right before your very eyes. The description box below has all the details as to getting it and the many ways and styles in which you can get it. Now, you don't have to be a 49ers fan. If you are, it's fine, too. But tell me, which of those four Super Bowl teams that Montana brought to a championship did you think was the best? The ones that won Super Bowl 16, 19, 23, or 24? Like this video, share it throughout your social media. Comment below because I want to hear what you have to say, VIP. Your comments are gold. Don't forget, hit the notification bell and subscribe to this channel for all new content that comes from here. Well, from all of us at Cold Sports, I thank you and I love you, VIP. I'm Cole Johnson, and this has been yet another installment of Cold Sports on the visual and on the daily.